Hey everyone, welcome to Bleeding Blue Shirts as Steve Bellicette and I preview game number four between the Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes. Rangers with the win on Sunday in the matinee at the Garden 3-1. Steve-O, when you think about that game and spin it forward to Tuesday night's game four, what stood out the most and what do you think Rod Brindamore now has to adjust? Well, I think that he's going to adjust how many shots he chooses to direct at the net. Now, that doesn't always sound intuitive to people, but it does matter how difficult you make a night or an afternoon like yesterday for the opposing goalie. Igor got into this game right away, John. He was warm. He was ready to play. 44 shots in the game doesn't really represent the difficulty that was faced. Six, only six, were high danger. And that's not a lot. In the grand scheme of things, teams should be looking at getting seven high danger in any particular game. But when you have 25 low danger shots, which Henrik and I were talking a lot about in the post game, it's almost like you get into a rhythm where you can play at your best and the highest level of competence when you are in a game. And that's what the Carolina Hurricanes allowed for themselves to do in this game yesterday afternoon, game three at the Garden. All right, so when you look at the way the series went in Carolina, Rangers score one goal, get shut out in game two, and then they come out with the effort they had in game three. Do you maybe think to yourself, maybe this Carolina team, which isn't star studded in terms of goal scoring, maybe this is a team you want to go punch for punch with, shot for shot with, open it up maybe the way the Rangers did yesterday compared to games one and two. Is that a mindset or a mentality, Stevie? You know what? It might not be the message from the coaches, but the players want it. The players want to open this up because they know they're the ones out there. One thing that we can say about what the players want is they want to play the game. They want to play the game. And a lot of times when we watch games during the regular season, we see the first period very structured and then a hockey game breaks out. And I feel like that's what happened in the series in game three. A series that was very structured in games one and two. It was played the way the coaches wanted to be played. The players almost revolt a little bit and it's sometimes it's ego, sometimes it's what they feel is best to win, but they came out and took charge. Now, in saying all of that, one theme that I saw in the game was that the Rangers were inside and they deferred outside. Oof. Not a good recipe for success, John. They've got to do it the other way around. They've got to be outside and get themselves inside, take a shot. And the players that are on the wings, uh, some coaches refer to this as the flanks, they have to come in so they can drive everybody at the net so they can get rebounds. One player should be driving in and take his man with him, pull him in there, and then one man should hang back. And it's almost like saying, the shooter sometimes needs to protect the drivers or the shooter that's taking it can keep themselves there and the driver has to recognize what his posture is and come high on him. There's definitely some work to be done to get inside and stay inside. I want to bring you back a little bit because Peter Pruka was a ranger that deferred too frequently to Yager. And watching the game in game three, the three of us, you know, yourself, myself, and Henrik are up top, and we had a really good picture of what was happening on the ice. Too many times I saw the Peter Pruka play where he came inside, and because it was Yager, as an older guy, would pass outside to him. Mm -hmm. I saw Lafreniere do it, I saw Heedle do it, and we both know why that happened in the first two periods, because they were playing on the older lines as we mixed up the kid line in the first two periods to defer a little bit too often to the older guys. They need to take it themselves. All right, so that said, do we see the kid line back together for game four, do you think? Or do you think Gerard Gallant starts the way he started on Sunday and goes with the split up lines? Okay, so I wonder, I know that he said we wanted to go back to our normal lines in the third period to defend better. We did it for defensive reasons. And you know, you can say that because you're up, but how did you get up? Yeah. You got up by splitting them up. Right. I hope you stick to that again. It gives them a really good look, a little bit more flexibility, a little more depth. There was a, a much better distribution of scoring chances in game three than there was in games one and two. Yeah, it gets back to the 
more offense, less trying to hold them to zero mentality. Along those lines, too, you're attacking goaltender in Antti Ranta, who is now starting to pile up the minutes and pile up the games one after the other every other day, as he has for all but one of the games so far of 10 in these playoffs. Freddie Anderson was on the ice for practice on Monday. Uh, what's your sense about Antti Ranta's condition right now and uh, whether that might impact seeing Freddie Anderson sooner rather than later? The only indicator of future performance is past performance. And here's what I've seen with Antti Ranta, covered him a lot, very closely when he was a Ranger and a lot since. He's one of my favorite goalies, I have to confess, in the league, technically. He's very sound. What I saw in the game was that he was down early, he was down too long, think of Kreider's goal. Mm -hmm. And that was losing his posture because he was getting smaller in the net, there was more rebounds. And I thought that his positioning was not what it was in games one and two. This is a string of games for him that he's not used to playing, John. He just, his thing in his career is he has not been able to consistently keep the hospital bracelet off the wrist. It's always been a case of not being able to, not just, he's a consistent goalie when he plays, it's just being healthy and consistent at the same time and playing at his technical elite level that he has. I'm seeing a guy that's fatiguing. I'm seeing signs of it the same way I'm seeing signs of it in Calgary with Jacob Markstrom, which means I'd like to see as much work to the net where there's pressure where he has to engage to get into his stance. That's when the legs are working. And then when you make, make your first shot at net, be quick to recover it. The Rangers, they targeted this side of the body. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because it's spitting off the rebounds. The blocker side spits out the rebounds, and that's a play where the Rangers can collect puck, retrieve it, and due to Carolina, honestly, what they've done for most of games one and two and three to the Rangers. Yeah, all right, so we've seen Two one in overtime. We've seen two nothing with an empty netter, and we've seen three one with an empty netter. What will we see in Game Four? Steve and I are going to talk about it with Henrik Lundqvist on the pregame show on Tuesday. It starts at six thirty on MSG. Game is on ESPN, and then as soon as it's over, the three of us will be there to recap it all. Interviews and insights, analysis, highlights, and it's all on MSG immediately after the game. Looking forward to it as always, Stevie. Thanks, bud. Can't wait, buddy. Let's get back in the building. Let's go.